Good morning, everyone. Um, can you believe it is December, December 1st? Crazy. Um, we will start this morning with introductions, and I'll just call on you as I see you on my list. Um, I am Theresa MacDonald. I'm a realtor with Alan Tate and a resident of Allen Hills. All Alan all the time, uh, Derrida, Statesville Road, um, community organization, board member, um, and just really passionate about making sure that we are doing the best we can to make sure we, we are at the table as changes and improvements hopefully come to Derrida. Uh, all right, let me go to Mel. Uh, yes, Mel Renner, uh, board member of the Derrida Statesville Organization, uh, former HOA president of the Forest Pond community. And if you'll note, it says Gail Haley on my uh, video here. I'm at my significant other's house uh, for the time being. Okay, welcome. Um, Teresa Braswell. Good morning. I am Teresa Braswell, and I am the current president of Forest Pond Homeowners Association. And of course, obviously, I'm a resident as well. And um, just excited to be able to be here this morning. I missed a couple of meetings due to um, scheduling conflicts, or I just missed the time, but I'm happy to be here and continue to learn and grow from the wealth of knowledge around the table. Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey Simpson. Yes, good morning. Jeffrey Simpson, president of the Farmington uh, Owners Association. Uh, gosh, I can't believe it's been, I think, a year participating in these meetings. Um, time does kind of fly, doesn't it? Um, it's uh, worked well with me with regards to being able to uh, share information with the residents of Farmington, and of course, to keep myself up to date uh, what's going on as well. So I think, uh, thank you, Teresa, for your efforts. Thank you. Uh, let me see, Jill Campbell. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Jill, and I am the HOA president for Generals Point off of Gibbon Road. Welcome. Uh, and John... Jonathan. Hi. Hi, good morning. I haven't been here for a while. Yes. I've been here. Uh, resident of uh, Allen Hill since uh, 92, so. Welcome. Uh, Shantae Bullock. Hi, I'm Shantae Bullock and um, I sit on the um, Scottsboro HOA board. Scottsboro, okay. And last, but definitely not least, and a special guest this morning, and you can move straight into giving us an update on Derrida Bench, Hadia Gandur. Mm. Oh, you're muted. Is this better? Yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, good morning. Um, I'm Hadia Gandour, and I'm owner of Inspired Plastics, and uh, I partnered with Saturn Atelier, which is located in the Derrida neighborhood, to uh, collect uh, 10,000 plastic bags or equivalent in other plastics, and to make a bench for... Um, a bus stop uh, that's going to be in front of um, uh, Derrida Presbyterian Church. Um, well, the bus stop's already there, but we're gonna put the bench there. Uh, there you see a picture of our prototype bench, and we tested that. It's um, uh, Hashim, who uh, is owner of uh, Saturn Atelier. He um, designed the bench and he was testing it right there. Uh, we tested it a lot, uh, believe me. 
Um, but the update is that uh, we collected um, almost 10,300 bags equivalent uh, from the neighborhood, uh, mainly from the neighborhood and also from the larger community because as people heard, we started just uh, bags kept on sh being showered on us. Um, and so um, we, if you see uh, the, the red bars there, that's the color of the bench. And um, you would uh, be pleased to know that it's finished. The full size bench, bench is completely done and it's ready to be installed. We're gonna have a, um, a celebration on Tuesday the 13th at six o'clock. We'll probably have pizza there for anyone who'd like to come and just celebrate and see the bench before it gets installed by cats. So great news for you. I can't hear you, you're, you're muted. Sorry, I just, uh, where will that event be at the Dorada Presbyterian? Yes. Okay. And uh, you're all welcome. Um, uh, we should, I, uh, Teresa, just so that we get numbers and know like how much food to get and stuff, I might ask you to, um, I'm, I'm gonna make a, an event bright and if you don't mind to pass it to everybody. And that way we have a, an idea of what, you know, who, how many people might come. Okay, perfect. Um, Teresa, forgive my, forgive my ignorance, but where's Dorada, this, where's this church at? Dorada Presbyterian. It's right on uh, West Sugar Creek, um, next to the Walgreens. We have where oh, the Walgreens okay. is at. But we'll yeah. we'll put the um, you know the the actual address and so on in the slides. But um, yeah, it's kind of between the school on the corner of uh, Rumple and. West Sugar Creek and Walgreens, which is on the corner of um, Sugar Creek and uh, Graham Street Extension. Right, okay. Thank you, Hadia, that's very exciting. So we'll we'll look forward to that and I'll put out that information with the link to um, RSVP and um, that'll be a nice opportunity to get together with people before we all <laughs> scatter for the holidays and all the busyness yes so it's on it'll be on tuesday the 13th at six o'clock okay a, a link will be forwarded to you uh, in the next day or so and thank you all for all the help that you've given us um, and uh, hopefully you can come and just celebrate with us Wonderful, yeah, Nadine, oh, sorry, I see Nadine in the waiting room. Um, her neighborhood did quite a bit of organizing to collect stuff, so. Um, Nadine, we were just finishing up on Derrida Bench. Oh, and here's Hashim as well. Good morning. Um, good morning. Um, all right, we just finished the update on Derrida Bench. So there'll be a um, an event on the 13th, Tuesday, the 13th of December at 6 p.m. We'll send out an event bright um, so people can RSVP, but to celebrate the, the completed bench and get, it, get to look at it before it's installed. Um, so Nadine, if you want to quickly introduce and then Hashim, um, as well, and then we can move on. And if you've got any more to say about Derrida Bench, go ahead. Good morning, my name is Nadine Henry. Um, I am um, the head of the Sugar Springs neighborhood. And it was a blessing uh, for our neighborhood to contribute. Uh, we had put out requests for people to save bags. Uh, Tony Gilchrist, is uh, our fearless leader for this project. And if you look at the picture on the left side of the two gentlemen, one is Hashim and one is Tony, and that was a, a pickup day. 
um, our entire neighborhood was, was blessed to be involved in the project. And thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Hashim, are you able to join us? Or are you just listening? Not hearing anything. I'm not hearing Hashim and he's not muted, so I'm not sure what's going on there, but. Mike is not working for some reason. Okay. All right, well, yeah. thank you, Hashim, very much. And we'll um, we'll look forward to celebrating um, with you guys. So it's a great, great project. We're very excited, so thank you. Um, and I see Kerry Miller has just joined us. Kerry, do you want to do a quick introduction um, before we move on? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Kerry Miller. I am a community advocate in Zoraida. I am the um, treasurer for the Avalon townhomes at Mallard Creek. And um, yeah, I'm happy to serve the community. I've been in Zoraida for five years, going on six years now. And I'm um, yeah, happy to contribute in any way possible. Thanks for having me. Awesome, thank you, Kerry. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna move on. We just did the um, Derrida Bench update and another big update that I have is the Owen Creek Greenway. Um, this has been in the books really since I moved into Allen Hills, which is 15 years ago. It is finally going to happen um, and the city is or the county is in the process of um, planning very at various aspects of this greenway connection. What it's going to do, it's a little bit off the map at the bottom here. It's going to connect Allen Hills Park. This is all Ribbon Walk, if you're familiar with that on Nevin Road and then Nevin Community Park, which you enter from um, Statesville Road. But this red line is the um, proposed greenway um, path that will connect Allen Hills Park um, to Statesville Road up here. Um, it's got a few creek crossings that it has to do. So there'll be a lot of bridges, there's public art planned um, and really a very nice feature for our neighborhood. Some of the questions that came up in the public meeting was um, some of these neighborhoods do not actually have a connection. Uh, and the, the creek is a barrier actually. So I, I don't know, um, you know what what the options are to to create these connections but it is a priority for the city and the neighbors you know of course want to be able to get into all this beautiful green space without getting in a car and driving around on Statesville Road or on Nevin Road um so we we can expect more conversations around that um but this is this is a great development it's it's been it's been on the greenway master plan for decades um and finally is funded and moving forward there is an event um on december 10th which is saturday i believe yeah saturday from one to three at nevin park um for it's a community engagement workshop with the um, artist who's been in, engaged or commissioned to do some public art for this for this project. So um, that's another opportunity to check it out, see you know, see more detail on the plans. There are links all in here, so you can read about it online. But if you wanted to actually go and see um, for yourself. This is a great opportunity, December 10th. 
Any questions on that? Okay. Um, and then I'm sure you guys have noticed if you're driving along Mallet Creek Road and I saw some questions come up on next door, but they've started um, to clear the land um, on these two parcels right at Hubbard Road. This will be for Jeffrey. Um, this has begun. I will try to add the links here so that we can look, but these, we, you know, we knew about these projects. We were involved in the various stages of the public meetings and the rezonings. This is Dream Key Partners, um, which is a partner with the city, a developer that does primarily affordable housing, and it will be for seniors at 55 plus, or maybe even 62 plus, I'm not sure. Um, but that is slated for senior housing. That owner was very involved as well um, to try to be thoughtful about who she sold her property to and how they would develop it. So um, I think that's going to end up being, um, you know, a good addition to the community over there. And uh, similar here, I didn't map out the whole parcel. There must be more to it because there's 22 acres over here. Um, and that is townhomes. I, I don't remember the details, but probably market rate townhomes, whether they'll be for rent or for sale, we don't know. Um, a lot has changed in the real estate market with interest rates being so high that um, sometimes, you know, the, these builders or developers have to change their um, plans to sell because they've just, the, the market is temporarily slow for, for selling because of the high interest rates. But I, I don't know anything about that. It's DR Horton, they're developing townhomes. They're just clearing the land, so it, it'll be, you know, several months before anything is um, coming out of the ground there. But that is what is happening on um, Mallet Creek Road. They were both approved in 2022, I believe. Or, um, and be the process, the rezoning process was begun in 2021. So that's those if you're driving along and wondering what that is going on over there, that's what it is. And Teresa, you know, yes. the, the property across from the senior um, development, yeah, I'm glad you informed me of that a while back you know, when they were trying to get people to attend the meetings <laughs> and I did inform my community. But anyway, um, with, with, with that other one that you was talking about where the townhomes are, it's interesting. Uh, a house is, right, is, is left right there in the middle of it. So I didn't know if there was a conflict or uh, would the person say I'm not moving or if that house is going to be torn down too? I don't know if you know anything about that. I don't know. Yeah, I was uh, curious myself because when you look at it, it looks like um, that house can't be too comfortable because <laughs> uh, the construction is all up on it. So um, it may be that this parcel has subsequently been included um in this whole thing I, and I'll try to look into that but yeah I had the same question because it uh, um it looks to me like that that house will come down and and it'll all be part of the development but uh, I think it was yeah. you know this was owned by one person and then these parcels on here were all owned by different people um Where but they have plenty of houses here and the developer is going to be doing, you know, major road improvements here. They're going to actually fix this connection here, um, as well as I think there'll be some access onto Mallard Creek. And I'll I'll put the links in so you can see the site plans and stuff, because um, I I just couldn't find that immediately this morning. But it will be townhomes, and I'm pretty sure it it includes some land for future greenway here. 
I can't, this is just a picture, so I can't like move around on this map, but you know, there's a lot of undeveloped land here. Obviously, this is Morris Estate. They're not going anywhere that we know of. Um, but next to them is a huge parcel that the county has acquired for future park. Um, it's about 50 acres. So um, shaping up to be a very, very nice um, place. You know, people buying the, into these townhomes would have potentially Greenway connection. Of course, the stuff could take years to come to fruition, but um, the road, obviously, the road improvements allowed for, for all this kind of unlock the development on, on a lot of this land. I'm trying to picture where this is, but I'm having a hard time. Uh, this is Hubbard Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Hubbard Road. This is Mallard Creek Road. Okay. Um, yeah, I know the my picture cut off where it actually said Hubbard Road, but that's I, that's I what now, it is. I was zoomed in on the map. I see now where you've got here at Hubbard Road. I apologize. Oh, no worries. <laughs> um, okay, anybody else got any questions about that? Okay. I think those are pretty much all the updates that I have. Some of these rezonings were approved. Um, this one was approved uh, on November 21st, that meeting. And there was another one that was also approved. I think it was this one um, that were pending last month and they have since been approved. These are not big, um, big impacts. Uh, this is this is a an existing lumber yard that would just cleaned up the zoning really on on a parcel that they owned, um, so that they can put some storage buildings on that site. Nothing else really going. Um, this one that we had a little bit of controversy over right here in Allen Hills. It was approved. Um, it hasn't closed yet um, because they're still going through some environmental um, approvals, but that one should, it should close in the next month or two and, um, and then we'll start to see some clearing happening over there and construction starting also for townhomes. Um, a lot of these are still pending, that's nothing new. Um, Jill, this one at 115 and Gibbon Road, mm -hmm. they had the public hearing on um, the 21st. So I can share the link so you can go and listen. I, um, I followed. Yeah. Some of the discussion, I wasn't able to follow it all. Um, I'll go and catch up, but um, it's pending. It'll be coming up for a vote, but you know it's going through the process. But they did have the public hearing, um, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know I if actually, you attended. I, I wasn't able to attend. I um. I did receive the public hearing notice in the mail though, which I had never received any of that before. So I guess because I finally got signed up on that on that site that you had told me about, I yes. guess that's why I'm getting that information. Yes, yeah, for sure. That's that, you know, you wanna make sure that you're um, signed up there. Um, and that way as a neighborhood leader, you'll get those postcards because otherwise the postcards just go to, well, they go to the neighborhood leaders that they have contacts for, but they, they only go to people that um, are within 300 feet or so of the, of the parcel. So um, yeah, well, that's, that's good. Um, a lot of the city council members raised some good points about that rezoning. So, um, is this linked on your on your graph? Is that a link to the actual meeting or no? It's not, but 
Can you um, send me that? Yeah, yeah. And I, I have also in the slides always the link and, and it's um, the city, you can find it on the city's YouTube channel or where it's just, it takes a bit of time to actually find where they're talking about that. Okay. So <laughs> I'll try to figure it out and maybe even give you a timestamp because um, yeah, I was watching it, but I, I couldn't keep you know those meetings are five and six hours long oh, um, a, a number on here a contact number for michael russell yes for, for more information regarding this petition to contact him so i could reach yes. out to him maybe he could send me something yeah and i do have the presentation from the developer as well so mm -hmm. i i need to send that to you as well because that that you know, their initial meeting was not attended by anyone. They, their, their first community meeting and the list of people that received the card is there or that were mailed the card. Um, but nobody, nobody attended that meeting. But the public hearing, I, I, did, I wasn't, I didn't see enough to see if anybody showed up to the public hearing with city council. There was another one that I received a notice for, but it was for property located on Sunset Road. Yeah. Um, it might be this, oh, sorry, this one here. Is that, uh, I'm waiting on more information. They've, they've got two existing motels. Is that the one? Yes. Yes, that yeah. is it. No, wait a minute. Uh, Wait a minute. Yours says fifty three ten. My the paper they sent me says fifty three oh one. I don't know if the numbers got transposed, but oh, this here for uh, and it may be that that could well be me as well. So that's there are two on Sunset Road. Wait a minute. Um, Here's the number. Yes, I see the number. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That one there. Yes. Uh huh. Oh, for one. Okay, I don't. Yeah. I didn't get much detail on that one. It's just, it's a B1 to B2. And, you know, I don't know that it's a big change in the use, but we'll, we'll look. Yeah, it says it. currently zoned for community center and B1, which is neighborhood business. But it says proposed zoning is for B2, meaning I guess that means general business. And then it says proposal allow uses permitted by right and under prescribed conditions as allowed by the B2 zoning district, which doesn't tell me a whole lot. I know. And I've got a feeling they discussed this one in that same meeting because that's yes, it was starting... it was the same. It, it was the same date. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's starting to sound familiar. So yeah, it might be worth waiting through five hours <laughs> of the meeting to figure out where they were discussing these. Um, the good news is that, you know, the council, all of all of council is quite engaged in in all of this and um, trying to do the best that they can to make sure that you know these changes that that are made, if they have any um, negative impacts, that they try to mitigate those. Um, so yeah, that's three right around you. So we've put our heads together and make sure we keep track on of them. Yes. Um, anybody else got any questions? Got a noisy machine going back here. Um, Anybody else know of anything? You spotted anything? Um, I, I haven't seen. I think they're pretty much done with 2022 rezoning applications. I haven't seen anything new come up for our area. Um, but let me know if you spot something that I don't know about. Um, and I just kept this slide in here. These are the links. This Charlotte Explorer link is the place to go to to see um, everything. It's It's got layers on the side where you can look at everything from bus routes to capital improvement plans to, um, you know, where they've slated speed humps. Um, Really, everything is there, even high crash zones. So they try to pull all the data from all the different 
departments and put it in one place. So I don't know how well updated it is, but um, for the rezonings, for sure, this is the place to look for, for updates. Um, and these links are just the others that I put in from last month. I'm, I'm pretty much through um, my updates. There was a town hall that Dante Anderson held. I wasn't able to attend it. I haven't watched the recording, but the recordings will always be there. Um, I don't think Malcolm Graham has rescheduled his town hall yet. Um, one of the at-large members, Luana Mayfield, she also had a town hall. And those can be useful to go and, um, and attend or watch the recording because, you know, they will often invite various departments of the city and and obviously, the members of the public will will lead some of the discussion or raise some questions that can be answered at that time. So it's worth um, checking out if you can. Um, Revaluations still coming. I I had, don't think we've received anything yet from the tax city county tax collector with our new valuations uh actually i did read that there was a, going to be a delay on that so um these dates here i think have changed so we'll try to get those updated because i think there is is a delay on that and they uh, it's always an issue because you know we've We've just had this crazy two years of um, of real estate sales that really bumped up the average price all over Charlotte and especially in Derrida, mainly because we we started at a low base, um, being relatively more much more affordable than the rest of Charlotte. Um, but we've we've kind of caught up. Um, which is something that needed to happen, but unfortunately it's probably going to mean some higher taxes um, when, when all this is figured out. But let me know if you have any questions, if you receive your valuation, but I think it's all been delayed. I don't think it's on track with these, these dates that they projected. Um, These links are always here. This is the, the list of neighborhood contacts that Jill was talking about earlier. Um, make sure that you're on there um, so that you receive the notices from the city for rezonings, for public meetings, you know, whatever um, for your around going on around you, um, you will receive the postcards if you make sure you're you're on this list. And I didn't update these. This is all old news. Um, anybody will go to neighborhood updates. I've still got last month's notes in here, but I will put in the new notes. So let me know if there you guys have any updates or anything to share from your neck of the woods. Well, Sugar Springs, I need help. I'm looking for somebody who is willing to play Santa Claus. This would be probably Christmas Eve or the day before. Uh, so hopefully we find somebody who has a Santa Claus suit or we can rent one. And the idea is for people to put their gifts in a, in a um, white pillowcase with a red or a green ribbon and their address and information. And Santa Claus will come to the house and drop off the package and take the time to take pictures uh, with the family if they so desire. Um, I had somebody in mind and he is so busy he can't do it. So if anybody knows somebody who just loves to do it, we would appreciate it. Uh, today being the 1st of December, 
uh, is Red Bow Day. So we're asking everybody to put a red bow on their mailbox if they so desire. And um, that's about it for sure. Bow. And what does the red bow represent? Uh, we just decorate our mailboxes every year. Oh, okay. So when you go down, when you go down the street, there's a, a red bow on hopefully as many mailboxes as possible. Just just decorating for the holidays. Oh, that's um, great. I have seen uh, a lot of homes being decorated already with outside lights and, and uh, activities. And of course, we're gonna have the um, Yard of the Week signs back up shortly um, for those homes that are doing a great job. And uh, Merry Christmas to everybody from Sugar Spring. Thank you. Um, anybody else got anything going? Um, I didn't manage to send her a special invite, but our neighbors at Greenleaf, the, um, the neighborhood, um, it's on Gibbon Road, kind of between Allen Hills and Gibbon Road. Um, they just got a grant from the city for um, about $21,000 yeah. to do some improvements to their um, playground. And they've got a few walking trails and um, ball courts and stuff like that. Uh, so they had a great success with a with a grant application for neighborhood matching funds. I'll try to get Sheila and the people who spearheaded that um, to come in and talk to us about their process. But um, yeah, there's definitely funds out there for for neighborhoods and businesses. Um, it's a matching grant, so you do have to have the community contribute um, in hours, usually. Um, volunteer hours is um, is the requirement. So uh, look into that. The, those links are always in these slides um, for neighborhood and business grants. To uh, There's a lot of resources for neighborhood organizations. Um, they do a board retreat twice a year. So if you're just starting and you want to get your neighborhood documents and process, bylaws, all of that um, together, the city has resources for that. Of course, you need the people. Um, but those, those links are all in the slide as well. Um, Anyone else, Kerry, do you have anything on your, um, the property next door to you guys? Uh, can you hear me? I yes. have to ask them. I'm wearing a, a, a different headset and I'm in a really loud environment. So let me know if you don't hear me. So I do have an update. So we have received the site plan, the site, they call it a site map. Uh, not sure, but we received it from the developer. And uh, they have already, if you ride down Nevin, down the, the corridor, you'll see where all the trees have been marked with white tape. And those are the trees that they are uh, considering moving. Uh, there will be 75 apartment units on that road. And they will be replacing our fence as they as we are encroaching onto, their, onto that lot on the corner of Mallard Street and Nevin. The issue with me, we have a retaining wall behind this, and the property line stops right there at that retaining wall. So we're in negotiations on what type of fence they're going to help us replace it, replace because we need a privacy fence. Because while they're coming into our property, according to the plan, and I can send that to you, Teresa, according to the plan, they're going to have 75 parking, uh, uh, parking spots. So as I, I believe this will be, you know, beneficial to the to the to the area for us who have already been our who have established our community 20 plus years and we have that retaining wall and then 
a tree line perimeter, of course, they're going to have to replace some of those trees, but not the ones that are going to be separating us from that apartment complex. So a majority of the land that they're using for the buildings are going to be right there around the church. Um, I don't know the name of this church. Uh, I can't remember the name of the church. It's a big church right over there between, like right off of Street Creek. Um, I can't remember it right now. But uh, so yeah, that's where we are. Uh, we have received those plans and we are working with them as far as providing them dirt uh, because we also got approved by the city. We got a, we received a grant to, re to approve, uh, to, to replace our fence. Uh, Great, sorry, Carrie, your sound is not great, but um, I got the gist. Yeah, please send the site plan because this is not a rezoning. That land was zoned multifamily now? probably way back when when Avalon um, townhomes and all of the townhomes around there were rezoned. But um, so it's not a rezoning. It's not something that comes up for a lot of public input, except with the immediate neighbors. So yeah, send. I would love to see the site plan and. Um, Sounds like the developers are working with you guys um, as, as much as um, they may be obliged to, and maybe they're not obliged to, I don't know. Um, I see Sylvia. Yes. Hey, Sylvia. Do you want to have a, do you have any updates? We, um, we're at kind of neighborhood updates. Biggest thing that we've had is a little bit of crime here in the neighborhood, but uh, I'm in the process of uh, getting several dump sites cleaned up. Uh, one of them is at Gibbon and Niven. Uh, one of them is here in Allen Hills. Uh, not have to look at my notes, but I've got, I've already called in all of, uh, all of them, the dump sites that I could find, trying to clean up for Christmas and the holidays. And, uh, other than that, you know, uh, I'm sorry I'm late, but I got tied up in something and I'm just now getting here. So, Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving and looking forward to Christmas. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, anybody else got any updates to share? We're um, we're doing well on time here, which is good for me because I've got something um, that I've got to get to. Um, anybody else got anything, any updates, any events to share? And you can always email me um, if you've got anything that you want me to include with the email blast or put on Derida News. You guys should be able to post on Derida News on Facebook. Um, next door <laughs> is, is so hard to use. I, uh, It's impossible to to just see, you know, what I want to see. Um, we're now seeing stuff from all over Charlotte and it's just too much to wade through. So um, kind of, I don't know if anybody's using Nextdoor with any success, but um, Facebook, the writer news on Facebook is there and, um, That's it. I guess we've got these two events coming up. Maybe I'll see some of you guys there. Sylvia, if you didn't um, hear, we've got on the 10th at Nevin Community Park, they're doing a um, an community engagement session with the artist who's going to do, be doing public art for the Greenway, the um, Greenway connection between Allen Hills and Nevin Community Park. When is that, Teresa? December 10th. Okay, what time? Saturday, Saturday 1 to 3. Okay. I got to make myself a note or I will 
Mm. Uh, it'll be in the um, in the email and the slides as well. Okay. And then um, the bench, the derider bench is complete and they are having a celebration on the 13th. That's a Tuesday night um, at derider Presbyterian. Um, so there'll be another opportunity. Hopefully people will come and, and just have some fellowship and celebrate the bench and see, see what's next. And that is when? December 13th. Okay. Uh, 6 p.m. And there'll be an RSVP um, that'll go out because they do want some numbers. They're going to be providing pizza, so they want some uh, numbers for food. Um, all right, folks, I think that might be... Is he still collecting uh, bags for future? Uh, I don't believe so. Um, Hadia is um, Inspired Plastics. I don't know if she's still on the call, but um, she is has the business that that really reuses that those plastic products. So maybe Hadia. I don't know if you're still there. If you can let us know if we. Can still collect plastics for you. Okay. Oh, Hashim says he's always willing to collect plastic bags. Feel free to drop off at his house, which um on okay. Gibbon Road. That's right. an atelier. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to make sure that our plastic waste actually gets used for something useful. I, I, I just think it's a it's good use for it. You know, if somebody can, it keeps it out of the dump. Right. Yes, um, actually, we have a, another uh, request. We'd actually like to um, keep making these. We just need the opportunity um, to, to do that. So if anyone has any ideas of uh, like other organizations that would sponsor us to do this, then we're all ears. Yeah, I will try. I don't know if you've heard, I mean, speaking specifically of benches for bus stops, there is an organization doing that. And they just, um, they just did a study and found that less than 10% of our bus stops in Charlotte have benches. Um, so they had a drive and they were buying metal benches um, and getting sponsors for metal benches, but I'm sure you could slot in there somehow because the, the goal is, you know, to try to get benches at, at all the bus stops, try to make it a little more comfort comfortable for people to choose that That's option. Right. Yeah, well... If the next time you you have that desire uh, with Sugar Springs, let us know uh, in advance what days you know you want to do a pickup, and we'll do what we did uh, this time, which is put the bags on your mailbox, and you just come and pick them up. But if we know two or three weeks, even if it's a monthly pickup date for you, people will get that in their brain that oh, this is my week to do it. So I'll get them out there. We said have them out there by, I think we said by noon and they would be picked up by two. Okay, uh, Nadine, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll follow up on that, um, okay. especially once we have an outlet. Right. All right, thank you. Teresa, I don't know if I can uh, promise flyers. Uh, there may be, uh, the writer bench will make flyers, but certainly links um, and and there may be something that you can print out. We'll, we'll work on that. Well, okay, then. great. Now, just to clarify, when I said flyers, I don't mean like printed flyers. I mean uh, something digital to yes. distribute. Perfect. Um, yes. So, sorry, when you say, what do you want on the flyers specifically? Oh, I don't have a specific request for what I want on it. I just want to be able to share it with the community through via email blast. And also we have um, some social media 
platform. Okay, about well. the project? Um, no, about the celebration. The celebration. Oh, okay, yes, an event bright is coming up um, in the next day or so. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah, so I heard that part, but then I thought there was an, um, another event that you mentioned besides the one on the 13th. Did I mishear that? I thought there were two. The <laughs> yes, the other the event is, is the County um, Nevin Community Park event for the public art. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, whatever, I mean, whatever you can provide is fine. I mean, I, I yeah. plan to attend, I just wanted to spread the word. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there will it'll be in the uh, updates from this meeting and in the slides. So hopefully okay, you can wonderful. Pull, share you. from there. Okay. Um, awesome. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Um, if we're done, I'm going to say goodbye and happy holidays and merry christmas and all the things um you guys thank you for participating try to spread the word i would like to get a few more people here and if we need to think about changing the time to get more people um i would like to talk about that i just um you know don't have much input Chris, uh Teresa. Yes. One more thing. I stopped yesterday at Gibbon and Highway 150. I mean 115, where they're doing all the construction. And the gentleman told me they would be there. Prob their goal is two more weeks, and then they will open back up 115, hopefully all the way. Uh, okay. Oh, that is awesome to know. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. I think that's everything. Thanks again. And um, we'll see you. The next meeting will be January 5th, I believe. Thursday, January 5th. Email me if there is anything in particular that you would like to see um a summary for the year or you know something like that just let me know i'll try to work on that otherwise i will plan to see you guys at some of these events and um through the holidays and back on january 5th thank you thank you Teresa. merry christmas thank you merry christmas thank you